Rob, I'll start with you. It was, it was a great match. It was, it was for, from a spectator's perspective, it was really fun to watch um, your London roar duke it out with, uh, with some of the really heavyweights of, our, of the ISL league uh, the last two days. Um, so let's, let's take a step back. Managing this season, coming into the regular season, um, even before the addition of, of Kyle and Emma, um, how, looking at your roster, um, where, where, where were you looking to find um, sparks in terms of just staying at that top level and really securing a spot in the playoffs? Uh, probably the key thing was the relays, I think, uh, ensuring you had um, depth in the relays. Uh, and first week was pretty tough without Kyle and Emma, and we had a couple more to come in as well, a few injuries and so forth. So we knew if we could get through that first week in maybe second or third position, then uh, we could start to build from there. A bit. And um, and that's what we managed to do, obviously. Um, uh, beating Cali in the in the second match was a real highlight, obviously, and winning that match, and then um, then finishing uh, narrowly second uh, yesterday to uh, to Energy Standard uh, secured a spot in the top four. Um, so fourth is the worst we can get. Um, I think third is the highest we can get. So we know where we're going to be uh, going going into the playoffs. Uh, but we'll obviously we're keeping on building. So um, I think we'll be uh, this week. We may well try a couple of different things, but I think we know sort of where we stand in most events um, and uh, and most strategies in terms of who can sort of do what sort of load and so forth. We've got a couple of athletes who've got an incredibly heavy load, like Duncan Scott, who's just been amazing. Um, but uh, you know that's sort of where we stand. Really, really pleased uh, with the effort of all the team and, and just the way the team is bonded. Kyle's one of the two captains on the team and has done a great job. And uh, from a captain point of view and the culture we have, so all up, uh, really, really good. And um, yeah, we, we have one match to go, then we uh, we head away and uh, see what happens in November. Yeah. <clears throat> On that note, Kyle, um, you know, just before getting there um, on that first match, as, as one of the team captains, were you able to keep in check with the team at all or just check in and say, hey, guys, you know, good luck on the match. How's it going? Do you, did you have a lot of communication before you got there? Yeah, well, everyone, I was in the group, group WhatsApp and uh, able to watch the match at home, which was awesome. But um, it, was, it was fantastic coming in. The team was already pretty bonded and connected by the time I'd arrived here in Naples, so it made my job very easy. But I do think we have a really good culture, and I think uh, it's something that probably helps us with our performances in the pool, especially uh, in our relay performances. I think they've been awesome so far, and I know that's just because we're swimming for each other and swimming for our team. Yeah, and uh, I, I have to ask about the hair. It seems like you and a few other of the of the guys bleached <laughs> bleached the, your hair before this match. What was was that just in the name of team spirit? <laughs> Uh, yeah, the other day I decided I would dye my hair from a box uh, that I bought at the supermarket uh, and a few of the boys came to watch me and then decided that they'd jump in on the action and uh, I think there's five or six of us now that have bleached hair. Uh, mine was actually orange, which I wasn't a huge fan of, so I ended up going and getting it done professionally a couple of days ago. But uh, yeah, blonde obviously is a bit faster in the pool apparently, so, so um, I'm pretty happy with the blonde hair this week. Uh, who knows what I'll have come Thursday. Yeah, bl blonde looks good, and, and obviously blonde is fast. Uh, <laughs> so that was that was, that was fun to watch. Uh, just you walk out, and then you took your cap off after the first race. So it was like, whoa, nice. Uh, yeah, something different. I like trying something different. Make yourself stand out. Absolutely, <laughs> I'm I'm all for it. <laughs> um, so so Rob, coming into this match, um, you know, knowing you had. Emma and Kyle back um, and they were on pretty good form after seeing them in the last match. And then obviously knowing you had a pretty heavy opponent in energy standard, um, were there certain events that, that you were focusing on again? Was, was it still kind of those relays or did you have certain individuals as well where you really thought you could get a leg up? It was certainly, it's, it, look, it's a, it's a combination of everything. The relays were a focus, uh, but we had to make sure if we're stacking our relays that we're still strong enough in the individual events and, and not overloading some of those athletes. We talked about Duncan Scott. He's sacrificed a lot. He hasn't done the relays the last two matches because we've used him individually so much and um, really heavy load for him. And um, it was only because of the uh, the jackpot rules, which we're not a, a fan of at all, that um, he's not the MVP this time around. And, and um, yeah, but, but on top of those relays, you know, some of those athletes that stepped up, you know, Katie Shanahan winning the uh, 400 IM in a massive personal best and Dylan Carter in the 50 fly and 
Uh, Alia Atkinson is consistently um, so strong, and Sydney Pickram's back to her best. You know, but she's still got improvement there. But you know, she almost won that 200 IM, and it's just the, the list goes on. But to win, I think we won 19 out of the 40 events across the two days, which is fantastic. Um, so uh, like, again, like I said before, really, really pleased with how the the entire team performed. Yeah, <clears throat> my next question is about those jackpots, right? <clears throat> We've heard, uh, certainly we've heard a lot of just uh, general unhappiness. It, it, not, it doesn't seem like a lot of the coaches or GMs are big fans of the jackpots. Um, is there something specific that you don't enjoy about the, the jackpot rules? Uh, you want me to go on that one? The, um, look, it's, it's I have no, no issue at all with trying different things. And that's one thing the ISL has done is, is throwing the rule book out and just trying different concepts. So, you know, it's not, and it's not, so it's not a criticism in that sense because it's great to try different things in the sport. We're trying to bring excitement to the sport and entertainment for the fans and so on and to grow the fan base. So this is part of it. Uh, but the jackpots, that, look, it's skewed. You, know, you, get, you get events that uh, the way the jackpots are, are worked, if, if the field is weak, uh, and there's one really strong competitor, um, the jackpots are a lot easier to achieve. Um, whereas there's other events. Uh, I know Kira Sassant last year, for example, broke a world record in the 50 metre backstroke and she didn't jackpot anyone. Um, so uh, she gets nine points and yet someone else can jackpot uh, five or six swimmers and get 22 points. And you know, we saw it last night with the uh, the mixed uh, medley relay. Um, you know, the, 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 the bottom four teams were all jackpotted and they were two teams from Tokyo and two to LA and all those points go to the, the, the lead team. Um, and that was actually, that was more than the end result. So it all come down to one race basically. So I guess that that's kind of the, they're the, they're the reasons why the, you know, the, the jackpots are, are a little unfair to be honest and it's not a criticism of energy standard they were tremendous they were you know great competitors and they they deserve to win the match you know based on how it was yeah the that that mixed medley relay was uh was, was a point i wanted to talk about next kyle i can go to you for this one because in in your first match back you you swam the mixed medley relay you dove in i think eight and then you passed every other team um, you got the win for, for the team. And it was, th that was one of the most exciting races to watch in that match, certainly. And then, you know, yesterday you guys were coming in uh, with a similar strategy, um, but <coughs> it was a completely different field. <coughs> and obviously it was a completely different result as competitors. Um, how are you feeling about that race, especially knowing that the, those bottom four teams were completely jackpotted and, and that race became so uh, so detrimental to the overall team scores as it ended up yeah i think uh it was a really fun race to be a part of obviously last week it uh it made me feel like i was flying racing against seven seven girls and kind of getting to swim over the top of them and touch first it's kind of how i try to swim my my individual races normally i kind of like that come from behind but this was uh over, over exaggerated obviously which was nice but um it was fun being a part of it again i knew it was going to be a very challenging race. I looked to my right and saw that uh, Sarah was lining up for energy standard. So I knew my life was going to be a bit tougher yesterday. But um, but yeah, I think for me personally, I don't think too far into it all, to be honest. I, I do my job for the team and try and win as many points as I can and try and touch the wall first. Uh, every time I dive into that pool, I know. Um, I could get caught up in it and I knew know that I'd probably get upset with it all. But I think for me personally, I just try to win my races uh, try to carry those relay teams to the best of my ability. And I know that my, my best swims do come in those relays normally. So um, I think this, this meet's been no different. My relay swims were much faster than my individual swims. So um, I'm happy with the performance with the team. Um, obviously, it's tough knowing that um, we got jackpotted. Well, that one of our teams got jackpotted, but at least we're able to secure some teams, but uh, some points. But you, I, I do look at it and go, well, Duncan Scott is the, is the MVP at the end of the day. He's a guy that you can throw in any any event um and he'll give it a crack and, and he'll do his best to win and uh i think that's for me is the most valuable swimmer in that and in, in a team he's a guy that can race as many events as we put him in and do so well so i love watching him perform and, and for me he's he's definitely the mvp of the team i can't believe how many events he's swam. he's he's by the end of by the end of the regular season it seems like he'll, he'll have been in pretty much every individual uh which which, which is pretty insane um, but, uh, so, so Kyle, you know, after coming in for your first match as a relay only swimmer, it seems like you were well on form. Um, you come into this match, uh, you get to swim some individuals as well. 
Um, how are you feeling heading into this match, just knowing you had those really solid relay performances? Were you feeling pretty in shape heading into this season? I wouldn't necessarily say in shape physically, but mentally definitely very in shape, I think, coming off of um, such a big uh, competition in the Olympic Games. Mentally, I'm ready to race, and I found it quite challenging sitting in the stands watching uh, people swim my events uh, in that first competition, but I knew that uh, I needed to get myself right to be able to perform this week and do what the team needed me to do. So um, it was definitely awesome to be able to contribute individually this time around, and hopefully maybe I'll snag a few more events as the competition uh, or as, as the, the season continues. But um, again, I do exactly what the team needs week in, week out. Now I know that uh, the thing I love the most about the ISL, it's you push your individual performances and success or unsuccess aside. It's all about the team and contributing to that team. So um, if I can be a positive influence, not only in the pool, but out of the pool, I know that I'm I'm doing my job and, and, and I do love being a part of the Raw and, and wearing the gold or the green cap each week. Do you, do you feel like it's, it's a different beast uh, tackling, getting, getting prepped to race for short course as opposed to, to long course meters? Absolutely. I think it's a whole lot easier to do short course racing. Obviously, I do the 100 freestyle and 60 meters of it. It's pretty much underwater. So I know that I don't have to be in great physical shape just yet, but I know that as the competitions progress, I'm only going to get better. So by the time the final comes around, I know that uh, I'll be in physically in good shape. I'll have no beard and, uh, and I'll be ready to swim really fast. So um, I'm excited to see how these next meets progress. But um, at the moment, like Rob said, we're just trialing people in different spots. And I'm excited to see who swims what events this week uh, uh, coming. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, and so then heading, heading into, you know, you've got one more regular season match and then uh you get to go home for a while or i i, I guess for you kyle you're not going home are you do you, do you have a, a no. more solidified plan of what the next six weeks will look like for you yeah no home for me unfortunately obviously with australia's tough lockdown rules uh, i'll be staying over in europe and doing the world cups to stay fit which would be good and then i'll probably head to toronto with uh sydney and training her squad for a, a week and a little bit there and then and then head back to doha for the third and uh, Kazan for the fourth leg of the World Cup. So it's going to be a busy schedule of racing, but I know by the time I hit Eindhoven, I'll be um, in good physical shape, ready to, to perform. And um, it's nice having these competitions kind of locked in. Obviously, in Australia, we don't get the opportunity to race all that often and especially race at this high level against the best in the world. So to have that opportunity for months on end, uh, I'm really, really excited about that. And um, I'm excited that my training's now gone from you know physical like, training hard every single week to kind of racing is my is my heart uh is going to get me into shape so it's a, it's a great opportunity for sure to, to i guess stimulate the mind try something different and i guess celebrate the five years that we've just had leading into tokyo it's been a long uh journey uh so it's nice to be able to do some some uh, enjoyable swimming i guess it sounds enjoyable it, so it sounds like a lot of travel and a lot of fun and like you said, changing things up. Uh, and then, and then Rob, um, coming back to you, you know, heading into those playoffs, there is, you know, the five to six week gap. Um, what, what's the hands-on hands-off approach as the GM? Do you try to stay in contact with, with your athletes during that period? Do you kind of check in and make sure they're going to be in shape for the playoffs or, or do you, do you have a pretty good idea of what they'll be doing without pestering them too much? No, I, I certainly don't pest them at all. The um, and it's part of our part of our whole culture and team strategy. Really, is that uh, is 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 everyone on this team, and it's athletes and and staff, coaching staff and support staff, you know, taking ownership for their own choices and so forth. Uh, as GM, I am there for them. They're, our head coach Stephen Tigg is there for them if they if they need to. Uh, to discuss anything or, or um, want to let me know if a change of plans or anything like that. So that's always available. Um, and we do, we do from time to time, um, you know, can, can chat with the, the different athletes, uh, probably keep in touch with Sydney and, and, and Kyle mostly as captains. Um, but, you know, that'll be pretty minimal. I think they, these guys know what they're doing and they'll, they'll I'm sure be keeping in touch with the different athletes. We have a, we have a, a quite uh uh, humorous uh, group WhatsApp app chat, which the whole team's on. So um, I'm sure between the two, uh, between here and uh, Einhoven, there'll be there'll be plenty of chat on that. Um, and uh, yeah, the athletes have, uh, as Kyle said, have bonded so well. And we're talking about athletes from all over the world, and uh, they're all excited about getting 
back. There's some athletes that um, maybe, uh, I don't think too many, but there might be some that feel like they need to do a, a really good chunk of work between now and Eindhoven, and, and they've, they've got plans to do that. But, yeah, I, I really don't need to get involved with it. They're pretty highly motivated individuals. Well, Rob, Kyle, uh, thank you so much for your time. It was great chatting and getting your perspective on, uh, on this season and this last match. 